Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Nazir Dafnim Bet. Today's stuff is sponsored by Mark and Rina Septi Goldstein in memory of Mo Septi, a wonderful man on the occasion of his 26th year at site. The entire Hadron Zoom family is devastated by the loss of our dear friend and Chavruta, Carol Robinson Gould. Her gentle and warm presence was a perfect start to our day. We already miss her with love and comfort to Art and to the whole family. Okay, we're going to get started with our DAF. Before we do that, um, I want to just point out that the registration for the CM is up. So, now willing, we'll be finishing Nazir in two weeks from today. On Thursday, we will uh, Thursday we will celebrate the CM. Um, so, register for the Zoom CM. If you live in Israel, there's CMs around the country. There'll be some in America as well. We'll publicize uh, the ones that we know about. If you're planning to, if you want to initiate within one of your communities to do a CM, so please let us know or you know, kind of initiate it within your group and. Uh, see if there's interest, and it's always nice to get together and celebrate. Particularly, this wasn't the easiest Masechet, so it's nice to celebrate the accomplishment of finishing. Even if you're not even finishing and you're, you've are been part of the learning, also a good reason for celebration. We're going to get started with um, the bottom of Nun Aleph Amabit. We started with the question, we dealt mainly the entire daf yesterday about Rakav, and now we're moving on. So because we were dealing with Rakav and it had to do with we talked about a body missing parts when it was buried. So now we have Rav asked a question about a totally different topic. If we have an ant that's missing, ant A-N-T, that's missing a leg, for example. In general, there's a halacha. We talked about it when it comes to betul. It's not nullified because of its importance and more so because of the, um, the eating it. If you eat uh, an ant, normally if you eat something, you're only liable, you only get lashes if you eat an olive bulk's worth. But in the case of an entire creature, you're liable because even if it's teeny, but you ate the whole thing, therefore you're liable, you'll get lashes. So Rabbi wants to know, if this ant is missing a leg, is that considered not in its entirety anymore? Or do we say, no, it's in its entirety because the ant was functioning without this leg, so it was still a whole creature just because it was missing a part. So now we have an answer to the question, although it's only an attempt to answer in the end, we're not going to be successful. We're going to reject this answer. Today is going to be a lot of rejected answers. Okay, we're going to be left with a lot of questions. Amalav Yudami Discarta. Tashma, let's learn it from the following source. And his source is going to be discussion of there's Shmona Shratzim, eight creatures in the in the Torah, it's a debate about how to define all of them, particularly the one even we're going to discuss today called a chomek, which can be translated as a skink. Anyway, not exactly sure. There's a debate about what exactly it is, but I'm not going to get into those elements right now. It, there's two psukim that describe that we're going to darshan right now, and I brought them on the study guide. So if you look there, you can see them. These are the things that are impure to you among all these creepy crawler creatures. Anyone who touches them when they're dead, Yitma the Erev, will be carry impurity day, day long impurity. Notice the wording. Anyone who touches Bahem, them. Okay, them usually infers, refers to complete them. The next the success. So now, and notice two differences. One, it said no if you touch them, and it said them, Bahem. The next Pasuk says, alav mehem bimotam. If it falls upon you, as opposed to you going ahead and touching it, but somehow it fell on you, this dead creature, and it says mayhem. Mayhem, you might remember the word mem from, it always usually, the Gemara likes to darshan it, or the rabbis darshan it as from it, but not the complete thing. So meaning even if it's not complete. So now we're going to quote a bright to the darshans, these two words. Hashma, bahem. Yachob Kulan. From the word Bahem, it sounds like you need a complete creature in order to pass on impurity because it says them in their entirety. Talmud Lomar, Mayhem, but then it says Mayhem to make you say, oh, it must not be that it has to be complete in order for you to become impure to it. E Mayhem, Yachob Satan. So because of the word Mayhem now, now we're going to do the reverse. It sounds like if you only come in contact with a creature that's, let's say, half there or 51% there, you know, maybe it would already be fine. Talmud, it doesn't get into a majority or not, but it's just talking about a part of, meaning it wasn't complete. Talmud Lama, Bahen. 
So now we're very confused. This is like saying go this way and that way all at the same time. So what do we say? How could you possibly have this where it's both complete and not complete? Sorry, until you come in contact with touch or touches you, that doesn't matter. But part, which is like a whole. Okay, that didn't help us very much. The rabbis came up with an amendment. This is the measure that the sheretz has to be in order to pass on impurity, has to be the size of a lentil. Why? Because they take one of the smallest of the creatures. The chomet is when it is born, the smallest possible chomet you can have that's complete when it's born is ka'adasha. That's the size of the chomet when it's born. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Well, they say from here you can infer shmamina shi ura gemirala. It needs to be complete because let's take this chomet when it's born. If it's born and it's missing a leg, it won't be the size of an adasha. The assumption is here when a chomet's born, it's exactly the size of a lentil. So if it's missing any parts at all, it won't be that minimum size of a lentil. So now, again, this is a totally different topic. This is impurity and we're talking about eating, but what they're saying is, let's learn from here to our end. The assumption is that since this chomet, when it's born, without a leg, it will not be impure. Like we make this distinction based on exactly the size it is when it's whole and complete. Maybe the ant needs to be complete in order for us to be liable for eating it. Not exactly a fair comparison. That's what the Gemara is going to say. They're going to knock it down for one particular reason. I'm a Rav Shmaya. What do you mean? When we say, if it's not an Adasha, it's missing that leg when it's born, let's say, it's not going to be pass on impurity. Why? Because when it's created and it's not complete, it hasn't yet been a creature yet. And when it is created as a creature and it's not yet, and it's not whole, it's as if, okay, it's interesting, they use the word nishama, which usually is translated as a soul by a, by a little creature, but that's not the important thing. The important thing here is life. It doesn't have life yet. So since it doesn't have, it's not alive yet, it's important to have everything intact in order to create life in this, in this creature. But in the ant that already was alive and then lost its leg, that's a totally different story. Low. We wouldn't say the same thing necessarily because once it already has life, if it's missing something, not a big deal. It's only in the creation stage that if it doesn't have that, it won't be considered. And that's how they got to this whole shiur of the adasha. So, so we're left with a question. We don't have an answer to Rabbi's question. Now we're moving on to the next section of our Mishnah. And this is going to, this one, is going to be one, um, Mahalach, I can't think of the word, one, basically one sugi here until almost the end of our dah. Then we'll end with one more question and a potential answer for that question. So the Mishnah had said, Hashidra okay, This was all, again, we got to this because of the Rakav. We're on the Malot Tarvad Rakav. After that, we go to the, next, to the next part of the mission. The mission had said, a nazir, or remember, when does a nazir shave? When he becomes impure to the following things. And it was a long list of things. So now we're up to the next item on the list, or items, and that's exactly the, the question. Is it item or items? Hashidra v'hagogola, the skull, uh, the spinal cord, and the skull. So now the question is, right, she draws the spine, and the, the spinal cord, and the gogola is the skull. And these are obviously important parts of the body, right? We all know you can't function without either one of them. So now the, the Mishnah said that if you become impure to these, then, right, if there's an entire skull, even if it's, let's say, less than the minimum size needed, you'll become impure. To which he buy who they asked the following question. Shidra v'gulgolet. The Mishnah said shidra and gulgolet. Does that mean you need both? If you come across a skull and a spinal cord, then you'll be impure. But Odilma o shidra o gulgolet. Is it either or a shidra by itself, a gulgolet by itself, or is it both together? That one by itself would not be enough to make you impure. That's our big question. We're going to give the structure today is four potential answers. We're going to bring four tonic sources, many of them from the from the Tosefta in Ohalot. And we're going to try to get to an answer to this question. In the end, we're going to be unsuccessful. 
every single answer will be rejected. Okay, so we are going to be left with this very important question. Is it Shidra by itself or Gogola by itself, Mitame, or only both of them together? Let's get started. Tashma, Amarava, sorry. Amarava, Tashma. Rava brings the first source. Let's learn from here. Shidra, this is a Tosefta in Oala. Shidra, Shegired, Rov, Il, In, Sheba, Tehora. If you have a spinal cord, which is missing, oh, it's broken off, okay, spinal column. If you have a spinal column, thank you, that most of the bones are broken off, okay, like the, they say the ribs, okay, have been torn off, then it's tohora because you need the whole, the whole column. And you're missing a lot of the parts. Uba kevel, if it's in a grave and it's broken into pieces, because it's all collected in one spot, Afilu, like the grave basically brings them together. Therefore, afilu meshuberet o mefureket me'am ipnei akem. Okay, so even if they're broken or, or cracked off, it's still going to pass on impurity because the grave connects them all. What does this have to do with our topic? Well, what does it seem to imply here? Again, we're going to make a derivation. Tama mishum degeret. Let's take the first case. A shidra. It's just talking about the spinal column. The spinal column where the bones are broken off, some of them, it it won't carry impurity. But from here you can infer what? What if the spinal column had most of the ribs on? Then you can infer, and it's telling you, well, then it would be impure. And it doesn't say anything about a skull being there. So therefore, since it says the spinal column without the bones is a problem, uh, not a problem, it won't be impure. Sounds like if it had all those bones attached, then it would be, which sounds like by itself, not needing a skull to go along with it. So shmami na oshidrao gogole katani. Katani means, right? Read into that Tanaitic source, oshidrao gogole. To which the Gemara says, what are you talking about? We had this exact type of answer yesterday. Ha, lo katane. It doesn't say the derivation in there. You made up this derivation. You could say, what the, this Tosefta is trying to teach you is, when you, but if you were to scrape them off and you know break off those bones, then it won't pass on impurity anymore. But idach, but what if it did? Well, then we have a further question. Maybe you need the gogolet in order to make it impure. We don't know the answer, okay? So you can't necessarily make that inference. It's not a clear inference. Second source, Tashma. Rabbi Yehuda Omer. And this is a topic that we're going to cover, speak about a lot today. There's six items that Rabbi Akiva said is impure. Most of them have to do with bones or things from two different bodies. Okay? We talked about the rakav not being able to be impure from two different bodies. Now we're talking about all sorts of other things. You might remember, we saw that Rabbi Akiva had this drasha about the ravi dam. That I'll call nafshot mate when we had all those drashot of the Kohen Gadol and the Nazir. And then we, at the end, we said, well, what does Rabbi Akiva do with I'll call nafshot mate? And we said, he derives from there the blood. If you have a ravid of blood, a quarter leg of blood from two dead bodies, that will combine to create a shear of a ravid. That'll be matame and an oel. So again, we have a list of things where Rabbi Akiva was matame and the rabbis disagree. So shishan varim Rabbi Akiva matame v'chami matarim, but hazarbo Rabbi Akiva. For Rabbi Akiva, in the end, conceded to the rabbis and agreed with them in the end that they're not mitami. Uma, later, we're going to have a debate about which ones did he agree with, which ones didn't. There was a case where they brought this next line. It's so interesting that there's both an article of Shuli Mishkan and flashback about one element of it. And there's also a sheer going up later today of Rabbi Yiffy Clymer in On Second Thought about another element of this line. Okay, so it's always interesting to note where people decide, oh, I'm going to go off. This is an interesting part. So the issue of the Tarsiyim and what this is, is the topic of flashback this week, whether it's a place, whether it means something else. In any case, there was a case, you can read it there, so I'll leave it for, for that. They brought a, a, a basket full of bones from a shul, a Beit Knesset, in. Beit Knesset could also mean a gathering place. Int of the Tarsiim, okay, whether it's people or whether it's a place. Or... Okay, for our purposes, we're going to go with what happened here. Basically, it's bones, and they left it in the air. What does it mean in the air? Obviously, it wasn't floating midair. 
What it means is that they put it in a place where it wouldn't be matame ohel. So either it was in a house, but there was no roof above it. Okay, let's say there was a skylight. They put it in that area so that the tumor goes straight up and it doesn't go sideways. Okay, where if it's completely covered, then the tumor covers the entire space, whether, right, not only the space above it, but the entire fills up the whole space. But if it's open, or maybe they left it outside, like on the roof, so that it would go up and not get to people in the house. Anyway, where they left it outside somewhere, right? We don't know, but they basically tried to avoid impurity because they weren't sure of its status. Now, what was the question here? This is the topic of Rabbi Ifi Kleimer. What is the, it's very fascinating, Shior, about what is the role of doctors in Judaism? What is, what throughout the ages did people believe about doctors? Are doctors a good thing? Should we not go to doctors? What about God? Isn't God our healer? And how do we relate to doctors? A very interesting shiur. Anyway, Todus Harofei, and who's this guy? Todus Harofei also. And all the Rofim that were with him, they brought a whole crew of doctors, interesting doctors of dead bones, basically. So these were specialists. These are basically the, they knew the most about bones and they could identify where these bones came from. Was it one body? Was it more than one body? So they said, there's no Shidra here from one body. Okay, we have a bunch of bones. I guess it wasn't the minimum requisite amount that was needed. And it didn't have an entire spine from spinal column for one person. It's apparently made up of bones from a bunch of different dead bodies. So what can you infer from here? Uh, so what do they say? The reason is it doesn't have a shidra from one person. Notice that, right? What didn't it say? It didn't say anything about a gogol. So you can infer from here that had there been either a complete shidra from one person, complete spinal column, or a complete gogol at a skull, then this year would be megalach. In other words, all that was missing here, he said it wasn't a shidra. It's, he didn't talk about a gogolet. It sounded right. He should have said there's not a shidra from one person and a gogolet, right? We would need a shidra and a gogolet from one person if you say shidra and gogolet. So this again seems to prove either shidra or gogolet is sufficient. To which again the Gemara says, yeah. all right, so shmami now. From here you can infer o shidra o gogolet. It's not that the Mishnah means either or. But the Gemara rejects this and says, no, lo mebaya kamar. The Loma Baya structure, which means what? Loma Baya, you don't even need to say. In other words, you could have said more, but it was enough to just say what they said. Loma Baya Shidra Bugolet, Mimeta Chaleka. Not only is there not a Shidra and a Gugolet from one person, but Ella Afilu O Shidra Mimeta Chad O Gugolet, Mimeta Chaleka. What they were saying is we're so far from what's needed to create impurity here. Not, yes, obviously we need a Shidra and a Gugolet. Again, obviously, according to this interpretation, we need both. Not only do you not have a shidra and a gugol from one person, you don't even have a shidra here from one person. Forget about that you don't have a gugolet, right? You, you, you're, you don't, you're so far from what's needed to create impurity here. So that could be a way to read it, in which case, again, we have no answer. I just want to point out as an aside, and I don't know enough about this, but Rabbi Akiva has this big machloket with the rabbis about what's metame, what's not. And we're talking about here bones brought with a bunch of dead bodies what was going on? So first of all, it was in the time of the Bar Kokhba rebellion. It's very likely it could be from there. Rabbi Kiva was very involved in that. And also, there's all of Rabbi Kiva's students who died. So we also have that going on. So it's interesting that Rabbi Kiva is dealing a lot with death and tumma and impurity. And, and also, in the end, he, according to some interpretations anyway, we just saw he changed his mind about it, right? He thought one thing, then he changed to something else. And it's talking about bodies being together. It's very interesting. There might, might be some connection. I don't know. But it's interesting to think about. Third source. So the first two sources were brought to try to prove either or. In the end, we couldn't prove it. This source is going to try to prove both. Let's see from the number of things that Rabbi Akiva uh, argued about. What are the six things where Rabbi Akiva says they're Tameh and the rabbis disagreed with him about? Here we get a list. And you can look on the study guide. You can see they're listed by number, particularly because that's what's going to be important here. Number one, you have a limb that comes from two bodies. So what does that mean? A half of my limb and a half of your limb, let's say, right? So we have 
half a limb from one body, dead body, half a limb from another dead body. That is Matemet. I'll ever, and, and again, the rabbi said, no, it has to be a complete limb from one body, not two bodies mixed together. Let's say a limb was cut off from a person. So a half a limb was cut off from one and a half a limb was cut off from another and you have them both together. Or maybe a whole limb was cut off, but right now you only have half of it for whatever reason. And you have half from two people. So it's matana. Va'al chatsi kav atzamot sheba If you have half a kav, remember the nazir's megaleach only on half a kav of bones, even though a quarter kav is also mitame, but a half a kav of bones that come from two dead bodies. So again, you have this mixture. This is just like the revi dam. It's the same thing, which we're going to see in a second. Al revi dam habam ishnaim. Okay, on a quarter log of blood that comes from two people. So again, these are all things that Rabbi Kiva says. You have the requisite amount. It doesn't matter if it comes from one person or two people. Val etzem kisora. Okay, what number are we up to? So we had ever min amid, ever min achai, hatsi kavat samot, revi dam. We're up to four. Five is etzem kisora shenechlak l'shnaim. We have a bone that was the size of barley that's split in half. So it's no longer the size of a barley by itself, but it's with another one. And number six, this is the important part, ashidra v'halgulgolet. So now we have the, the, the spinal column and the skull. What can we infer from here? Turning out on the bed. Oshidra ogulgolet hani shivahavyan. The number is all off. Should be seven. Makes very obvious, right? We have oshidra ogulgolet. Then Shidra would be six. Google it would be seven. So the Gemara here, okay, this is, I just want to get it, the numbers right. Three, we're on answer number three to try to answer Shidra Google it. This time again, we're going to try to prove the opposite of what we tried to prove in the last ones. It's both together by the numbers here. And we're going to have four attempts to reject this. Okay. It's really one attempt with four possibilities. So in order to re reject this answer, we're going to say, that this, we're not going to, there's no line to say the topic sentence, but the topic sentence of the whole next four items is maybe the six was referring to most of these cases and one of them disappears from the list, either disappears completely or just wasn't included. We have this list and we have the number six. The number six doesn't correspond to all these things. The number six corresponds to six out of the seven items. And then Shidra and Gugolet are separate as six and seven, but we're gonna remove one from the list and say that when they use the number six, they weren't referring to one of these things because six was this magic number that was referring to something in particular that one of them is an exception to the rule. That's their way of doing it. We're gonna have four different, it's actually three different ones they're gonna remove, but in four different manners. Remember what the beginning said. There's six times where Rabbi Akiva disagrees with the rabbis. The rabbis means, a whole bunch of people stood up against him. But the afuke etzim kaseora de yachidu de paligale. Etzim kaseora shnechak lishnaim, that bone the size of a barley that's split in two, that is a machloka just between him and an individual, not the rabbis. So when it said there's six things he disagrees with the rabbis, remove etzim kaseora. That shouldn't be on the list. How do we know that he disagrees with only a unique individual and not the rabbis? Because there's a bright that says so. Says it explicitly. Mekiva makes says it's impure. Biyachan Benuri says it's pure. So that one can go off the list. Option number two. Ki katane ever mina mate, but ever mina chai lo katane ever mina chai. Take it off. What does it mean take it off? So it could mean one of two things. It doesn't mean it's not. He didn't argue about it. It just meant that ever mina mate and ever mina chai either. Take it off the list because it's included in Averman and Amid, or keep it on the list, but those are really all one thing because it's really a limb, whether it's from a dead body, whether it's from a live body, that all counts as one. When they did the count, I counted as one, and therefore Shidra and Gugolet are free to basically count them as two. Third option, which is going to go back and take off Etzim Kaseo Ra again, Ibait Ema, but for a different reason. Alternatively, you could say Kikatane when it says this list of six, Kolhecha de Nazir Megalech al Ahilo. It's only when the Nazir shaves if he becomes impure to these things, right? In a tent. Now, in a tent, okay, I don't know how they got to that, but they claim maybe it's only things that are matami in a tent, as opposed to la fuke etzim ksera dilo. Etzim ksera is not matami in the tent. Remember, that was the only one on the list 
That's metame only by touching, maga or masa or carrying, not in a tent. So maybe this was only referring to things in a tent. Get rid of, add some kasoha. And fourth option, even though it said, this, these are the six things, right, that Rabbi Akiva disagreed with the rabbis about, okay, it didn't say, and these are the ones that Rabbi Akiva ended up conceding to the rabbis about, but they claim that maybe that's what it means. It's giving you the list of items that Rabbi Akiva eventually conceded with the rabbis. One of these, he did not. One of these, he stuck to his guns and didn't change his mind about. Which one was that? The one we learned earlier. So, so again, kikatani kolhecha de hadarbe. Hadarbe means he changed his mind. La fuke to exclude revi dam de lo hadarbe. The quarter logo blood he never changed his mind about. That he still stuck to his guns with. How do we know this? De ama rebi le bar kapaha lo tishne revi itam bechazara share tamadosh rabbi akiva biado. So the first reason is rebi says to bar kapara, don't say that rabbi akiva changed his mind about revi itam. Because he had a tradition about this. Tamudo biado usually means either he had a good drasha about it or he had a tradition about it. For whatever reason, Rebbe was convinced that he did not change his mind about it. And therefore, take that one off the list. Ve'od. And furthermore, Hamikamasaya. Oh, the Pasuk supports him because otherwise he had nothing to do with those words. Remember? I'll call nefashot mate, lo yavo. Why did it say nefashot? It could have said nefesh, like it said by Nazir. It added nefashot to teach you this extra halach. So therefore, we, again, this is almost the end of the section. The last line is a little bit of a non, not part of the flow. So let's just review. Okay, let's review where we're up to until now. We started with the, with the question of the Nimala not being complete. That came from the Rakav case. We pushed that answer aside. It didn't work. Then we moved on to the next case in the Mishnah, Shidra Vagulgolet. We brought first the source, Shidra Shigireid Rovilin Shabbat. It's missing most of its limbs, right? They're disconnected already from the spinal column. And then we thought that meant that if they were there, then the shidra itself would be metame. No, you can't necessarily infer that. Then which said, right, there's six things that Rabbi Akiva said, metame b'chachamim metarim b'chazarbo Rabbi Akiva, and he changed his mind about them. And then they bring this case where they had all these bones and then the, the, the doctors said, oh, this is from different bodies, from different spinal columns of bodies. And it didn't say anything about the gulgolet. So it sounds like if it had come from the same spinal column of the same person, you know, all the spinal column of one person, it would have been Mitama, even without the gulgolet. But we we said, no, no, no. It, he was trying to say, like they were trying to say, doesn't have a spinal column or a gul, right? Even that it doesn't have from one person, forget about it, it doesn't even have the skull. Then we tried to say from this number, right? Six cases he disagreed with them, right? And eventually, um, he changed his mind about them. We have this list of seven things, unless you stick Shijan and Gogola together. But then we have four attempts to try to show, right? Either get rid of Esim Kisola for two different reasons, either because he doesn't just screw with the rabbis about it, he agrees with Rabbi Yochanan Benuri, or because it's not Matame but OL, and maybe that list was only things in an OL, or because um, Eber Minamed and Eber Minachai joined together as one, or because it only was the things where he changed his mind about them. And this one, he didn't change his mind about the Ravid Dam. So take Ravid Dam off the list, in which case Shidra and Gugola could be separate, in which case we don't really know. Okay, the last line here, before we get to answer number four, these were three attempts to come up with it. And within that, we have four attempts of removing one of them from the list. Oh, the, the, now we have a bright about this idea that Rabbi Akiva changed his mind. We're now going to see not everybody thought that Rabbi Akiva changed his mind about these things. Rabbi Shimon Omer, until the end of his life, he thought all these things were impure. Rabbi Shimon disagrees and says Rabbi Kiva never changed his mind. Interesting that we have all these traditions about this. He says, I know you're so convinced he changed his mind. Well, maybe after he died, he changed his mind. That I can't tell you. Okay. Well, this was not exactly the most respectful manner to talk about Rabbi Akiva, that maybe he changed his mind once he died. As a result, Rabbi Shimon took upon himself many fasts in his lifetime, because he was trying to atone for having spoken disrespectfully about Rabbi Akiva. And therefore, Tanit says about him, his teeth blackened because he fasted so much. And because of that, because he had fasted for having said this disrespectful comment about Rabbi Akiva. So it wasn't disrespectful in the fact that he said he never changed his mind. It was disrespectful to say, oh, maybe when he died, he changed his mind. That's a, not a nice way to talk about your uh, a respectable rabbi. Okay. Next. Fourth source to try to get to an answer. Hashma, Ditanya. Beit Shammai Omrim, Rova Atzamot Mina Atzamim, 
או משניים, או משלושה. We're going to have this debate between three. It's going to be Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel, and then Shammai Hazakein. Beit Shammai or Shammai students. But Liz, sometimes you have it where Shammai himself says something different than his students. It happens. So we're going to have Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel are really not relevant, even though we're going to deal with them a little. It's going to be Shammai's opinion that's important. So right now, we're going to talk about this Rulova Atzamot. Porter Kav of Atzamot, we know are Mitani. Now, the question is, are they from any bone? Do they have to be from a sampling of bones around the body? So let's see this machlok. Beit Shammai says, Rova atzamo min atzamin, o mishnaim, o mishloshan. It can't be a quarter cup of bones from one bone. It has to be from two or three areas in the body or two or three bones in the body. U Beit Hilalomrim, Rova min agvia, the quarter low, or the quarter cup of bones from the body, either me rova binyan o mi rova minyan. They either have to be from the majority of the body, meaning it's coming from not that many bones, but from the like the bones that make up the majority of the body, which could be big bones that just cover a lot of the body. Or may rov minyan. Or it has to be, there's a, an assumption that there's 248 limbs in the body. So 125 would be the majority. You'd need bones from 125 different limbs. Sounds a little extreme that you would have this, but maybe you could. Ham Rabbi Yeshua, before we get to Shammai, which I told you is what we need for our purposes, Rabbi Yeshua says, I could find a way to make them say the same thing. How so? Now, when you, first of all, there's a whole question. Why do you have to say two or three? This comes up in a lot of places, four or five or two or three. Why would we say this? So this is, right, that's a whole separate question. And why? Okay, I'm not going to get into that. And in fact, all the examples here actually bring three. Okay. We're talking about tuma in an ohel, yes. This is tuma in a tent, that a quarter kav of bones, matame in an ohel, or bimaga or bimas, right? All these kind of tuma. So now they say, either from, if you can have Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai agreeing, in which case, if you have mishnei shokayim v'yerech echad, or mishnei yerechayim v'shok echad, you could have two calves in one thigh, or two thighs in one calf, which ho'il v'rov gopcho shaladam migova. That covers the majority of the height of a person. So Beit Hillel would say it was a problem because it came from the rov, the rov uh, binyan, the majority of the build of the person. And Beit Shammai will say it came from three bones. So it would be matan. Beit Hillel amrim, mina gviya merov binyan merov minyan, ho il v'yeshnan v'mifrakei adayim v'raglayim. Where would Beit Hillel, Beit Shammai agree with Beit Hillel? Well, he says if you have from the hands and the feet, like the, your hands and your feet have tons of little teeny bones in them. So theoretically, if you have from your, I think there's, they claim there's 30 in each. So, or maybe a little more, I don't know. I don't remember exactly the numbers, but you could theoretically have from the hands and the feet, which would be two, according to Beit Shammai, right? he'll call it hands and feet. According to Beit Hillel, you would have the majority of the bones in your body. So that's how we get to that. Okay, that's an aside. Let's stick with the main part. Shammai, Omeo, Afilu etze mina shidra omeo gugolet. All you need is a bone, one bone from the Shidra or from the Gugolet, and that already will make it impure. So if you have a Rova Kav of bones from the Shidra and the Gugolet, you'll end up with a problem that's Mitami. Now, what's the assumption here? Assumption is the rabbis disagree with, with Shammai because you know we never really hold by Shammai. But what's the assumption? He says one bone from the Shidra or Gugolet is already Mitami. What did the rabbis hold? Shidra or Gugolet, right? Which either Shidra or Gugolet or Shidra and Gugolet. Now, what's the important part here? Shidra and we're assuming, now this is always an assumption they try to make, which is when there's an argument, it must be that they disagree about the least possible things. So now, if Shammai says one bone, either from the Shidra or from the Gugolet will, will create impurity, okay, a bone that's the size of a, a Rovaka, well, then the rabbis must say, no, not a bone. You need the complete shidra or gogolet. But notice, what do you need? Either or, because he doesn't disagree about everything with Shammai, right? The rabbis don't disagree about everything. They disagree about the, the bone. One bone from either the shidra or the gogolet. And the rabbis say, no, the whole shidra or the whole gogolet, the whole spinal column or the whole skull. And then you can say, there you have it. O shidra o gogol. To which they reject this, obviously, and they say, no, shama shama de machmir. Maybe he's completely machmir. 
Number one, the rabbis say either the whole, you need the whole shidra and the whole gogolet. And Beit Shammah says, not only do you not need both, but you don't even need the whole thing. You only need one bone from it, as long as it's a hatsika, a rova path. Okay, that's the debate. So now they say, oh, well, if Shammah is machmir, and then we assume he's machmir all the way, and the rabbis are on the opposite extreme, well, then lifshot mina, and that's why I put on the chart here, First, they tried to learn from the source, O Shidra O Gugola. Now they're saying, let's learn Shidra and Gugola. Then if we're saying Shamas Machmir all the way, then it must be the rabbis think you need both to be Matami. So why don't we learn from here? Lifshot Minah means let's derive from here then the answer to our question. Tama de Beit de Machmir. Harabanan. Therefore, the rabbis would say, Ad Ika Shidra Vigugola. Right? Shama is extreme the other way. Not only don't you need both, you only even need a bone from both, from either one. And the rabbis, on the other hand, say not only is a bone not enough from one of them, but a bone from one of them is not enough, but you need both of them. To which the Gemara says, no, you can't necessarily say that. Lo. And this is our final, uh, you know, our final knockout of our fourth attempt to try to get an answer. They really only disagree, or at least they possibly only disagree about the one bone issue. One bone versus whole. But if the entire skull is there or the entire spinal column is there, maybe one of them would be sufficient. So in the end, we can't prove from here either. So we're stuck, okay? We don't have an answer to this very important question. Again, important in a theoretical plane for us. For them, it was more practical for us. This is really theoretical because we don't really have this kind of stuff anymore. Again, other than Kwanim can become impure to dead bodies, but right, we're not really dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. So, but it is uh, a basic, in, incomprehensible section of a Mishnah. Shidra engogolet, shidra orgogolet. By the way, we've seen this many, many times in a Mishnah where ve, which usually means end, could mean or, okay? Often they, they bring cases, this and this and this, which really means this or this or this. Hey, we've had it before. Maybe I'll try to point it out next time. We'll see it again. Last part of today's stuff. Bye, Rami Barhama. is since we're on the Shidran Gogolet conversation, now we say the following. If you remember, our Mishnah had distinguished between a Hatsi Kav of bones and a Rova Kav of bones. Hatsi Kav of bones, we said this was the whole debate about the Rambam and the, and the Tosfot about it. But putting that aside, according to the simple reading of the Mishnah, read it, the understanding of the Mishnah, a chatsi kav of bones is mitame and messes up a nazir. A rova kav of bones, a quarter kav of bones, will mess up a nazir, but not, will be mitame and will mess up a nazir, but not in the same way. The nazir does not cancel the previous days. He does not have to bring a set of korbanot. It's a whole different category we'll get to on Dachin and Dalit. But there's this difference, a clear difference in the halakha of a nazir specifically when it comes to half a kav and a quarter kav. Same with the Rabi Dam and the and the quarter, uh, the quarter log of Dam or half a log. So Rami Rahama now asks, Rova atzamot mina shidra u mina gugolet man. Now the shidra and gugolet are clearly more central parts of the body, very significant ones to the extent that if you have bones that are less than a certain amount, they, you know, but they're, it's like the complete skull or the complete spinal column, or perhaps you need both together, but they clearly are different than everything else. So he wants to know, what if you have a quarter kav of bones from the shidra and the gulgolet? My, ki katani chatsi kav atzamot. When it says chatsi kav of bones in the Mishnah, does it just mean hey chadi ikam isharivarav? Does it mean less significant bones from anywhere else in the body? But, and therefore you need to get to a half a kav. Aval mina shidra u gulgolet dechamire, but shidra and gulgolet that are dealt more strictly, maybe afilu rov atzamot. Uh, rova atzamo, maybe even a quarter kav of atzamo will be tame. Because since these are more prone to create impurity, maybe a smaller amount, which is normally the amount that's metame, will also make the nazir migaleach, where he has to shave and he has to bring sacrifices and he cancels all his previous days. Maybe. Odil malashna, or do we say no? Chatsi kav of bones is chatsi kav of bones wherever they come from. So I'm a rabbi. We're going to have the first answer for this question today. I'm a rabbi tashma. Let's learn from the Mishnah itself. What does it say in the Mishnah? We already know that. We've been talking about it all day today. The spinal column and the skull. If you want to say that a quarter kav is, we're strict about, so you should have said a quarter 
have of atzamot that come from the skull or from the spinal column. And then you would obviously know that the complete one, obviously, but even a quarter cup to distinguish it from the others. Already this is distinguished, but it's not distinguished in the way that you want to distinguish it. So probably not. Okay, so comes Rav and answers from the language of our Mishnah. In fact, it says full skull, full spinal, spinal column seems to be very clear that it's complete and not, there's no difference of it if it's in bones structure where it's just a bunch of bones. From there, we're not going to be more strict and require and, and basically say it's impure at a smaller minimum amount. Okay, we're going to ask a question on Rava and answer it. Um, and then we're going to have another possible answer here. Okay, so quick review of our DAF. We started with this question about the Nimala. It's actually a very easy structure. Started with the question on the ant. We tried to bring a source from the Chomet, from the Shretzim, from a whole different topic of impurity rather than from kosher, non-kosher foods. And we basically said, not a good comparison. Then we didn't have an answer. Same thing with our next question. Shidra and Gugolet. Is it either Shidra or Gugolet? We brought four different sources. Within one of the sources, we had a whole we went off on trying to say, you can't prove it from there because the number six, maybe we take a different one out of the list. And we have four different attempts within that one to try to explain which other one we could have taken off. And we had these four, and then we had the Shammai, which again, all the sources were inconclusive about whether they would mean O Shidra, O Gugolet, or both Shidra and Gugolet. And then we had this question of Rabbi Bahama. Since Shidra and Gugolet are more strict, maybe the minimum size for bones that come from there would be a smaller minimum size. And we rejected that as our proof. And again, within this whole sugya, we got to see that this big basic machloka between Rabbi Akiva and the rabbis about mostly combining different types of, right, from two different bodies, not all of them related to that, but many of them related to combining things from two different bodies. Rabbi Akiva seemed to say it was, rabbis said it wasn't. And then we had this different ranges of opinions about did Rabbi Akiva change his mind? If he did, about which ones did he change his mind? And did he ultimately concede to them entirely, partially? or not at all. And that we saw different approaches. That's it for today. And uh, don't forget to register for the CM registration is up on the homepage. You can find it there. If you're in our WhatsApp groups, uh, it either was sent out, will be sent out, uh, sent out to some of the groups, sent out to more of the groups or by email. So uh, please register.